Welcome to the fourth video in the second part of a series on how to build a selectable latching relay circuit. In the last video, we discussed managing the low side switching of this circuit using two NPN transistors to do so. What I've done is added in, we focused on one latching relay circuit and managing its switching, latching it on by applying VCC to the base of the top NPN and using as a master reset or being able to unlatch it at any point in time using a second NPN whose base is pulled high. And we have our momentary button for our master reset over here and all I have done is tripled it. I can put this in the center so people can have 75% of the schematic associated with this circuit. To deal with the high side switching. In order to get a sense of where this is all going, we can take a quick look back at the diagram we did in the first part of this series, where we noticed that we would have a master reset line that one line branches into three that can unlatch relay circuits A, B, and C at any point in time when we press it. Well, that's your master reset line right there. It's controlling the unlatching of all three of them at the same time, regardless of which one happens to be on. Goes from one, branches once, branches twice, branches a third time. There's the master reset line at the bottom of the page. What do we have to do up here in the high side, though? We have nine lines up there. We have one line coming off button A, branching into three. It'll latch A, it'll unlatch B, and unlatch C. A press of A will. The same story applies for B, the same story applies for C. That's what we're trying to accomplish. We're managing these wires, how to do that in a circuit. To get started, first off, I haven't drawn in the lines that go to the top NPN. I haven't drawn those lines in yet. By the end of this video, we'll have a line coming from A that goes to this point in the circuit have a line going from B that goes to this point in the circuit, have a line from C that goes to this point in the circuit. But to keep the diagram halfway tidy while we're doing this, we'll draw those lines in last. Let's manage the high side. Ultimately, this is managing the mutually exclusivity. When we push momentary button A, we want it to latch, while at the same time unlatching B and C. And then the same with B, same with C. To do that, we're at high side switching. As we noticed with low side switching, we used MPN transistors. When you're on the high side, typical practice is to use PNP transistors. Or if you're using MOSFETs, P-channel MOSFETs. Like you would use N-channel MOSFETs down here. Keep it as straightforward as possible. I chose to use two PNP transistors per each latching relay circuit. That is separates out all the unlatch lines so that they're easier to see and think about. We'll need two PNP transistors to link up VCC at this point to VCC at this point. The same story will apply with all three sides. Okay, I've just drawn in the PNPs in series from VCC to this point in the circuit. That's the VCC line coming off the coil. And there's our momentary buttons. And the idea is we have to mate these two together in such a way that we get the functionality we want. Is each of these PMPs is going to need a base resistor. I found that using a 330 ohm resistor works the best for this type of circuit. So I'm going to add that in to the schematic. I've just added in the 330 ohm resistors to the base of the PMPs. Now, in order to be able to push one momentary button, like button A, and latch on relay circuit A, we would have to have VCC sitting at this point in the circuit so that when we apply voltage to the base of this top NPN, voltage is here ready for current to conduct cross that coil. That means that we need a continuous path. We need continuity from this point in the circuit to this point in the circuit before we push button A. How do we achieve that? Well, that means that we want these two PMPs to be switched on, conducting with no momentary buttons pushed. That's the normal or the sort of resting state that we want. We want these PMPs conducting. Remember that a PMP needs to be, the base of it needs to be 
0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts less than whatever voltage is sitting at its emitter. We need this base low, basically. We need it pulled low. How do we do that? Well, all we have to do is add in a pull down resistor to ground, say a 10K. That would suffice. And we could do that on all of these, and then we'll have a continuous path when no momentary buttons are pushed. There'll be continuity from this point in the circuit to this point in the circuit. So let's add those resistors in. Okay, the pull down resistors have been added in. This effectively makes the PMPs behave like a normally closed switch. That they will be closed, there'll be continuity across their emitter collectors on both PMPs, in turn making continuity from this point to the, in the circuit to this point in the circuit, until the base of that PMP is raised up so that it's no longer 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts less than whatever the voltage is sitting at its emitter, which we're going to do that via these push buttons. We will use these push buttons to unlatch the circuits. We have a master reset that will unlatch all of them at the same time, but this gives us the ability to select which ones we want to unlatch at what time. Namely, when we push button A, we want to latch on relay circuit A, but we also want to unlatch B and C at the same time. That's what this configuration gives us. These are in a normally closed state, meaning there's continuity, and we can break that, that continuity via the push of this button, which will in turn raise the base of these PMPs above that 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts less than whatever's at the emitter threshold. But in order to do that, we're not through. We need to add in some diodes and we'll explain that but we need some diodes let me add them in I've added in the diodes that we'll need the reason for these diodes is that when this PMP the base of its pulled low that means that VCC is able to travel from the emitter to the base sending VCC without these diodes it'll send it back down the line which is what we don't want given that these are going to be connecting to a point in the circuit at which our latching NPN is connected. So if we don't put these diodes, as soon as you plug in the circuit, this NPN, one or more of them will conduct and turn on whatever your load is. So the diodes just prevent that false triggering of the NPNs. Where to from here? We have our PMPs, their base protection resistors, their pull down resistors, and the diodes. At this point, if we want to add a little extra layer of protection to these PMPs, given that we protected the NPNs through this diode and reverse bias with a cathode pointing to VCC, as well as this diode pointing to VCC, that's protecting the NPNs. Well, with the PMPs, we may want to do a similar protection maneuver with them and add a diode from this point in the circuit up to this point in the circuit. There's our three protection diodes and reverse bias. Notice that all these diodes are 1N 5819 is what I'm using, but a 5817 might even be a better choice. You just want to use shock key style diodes because they have a lower voltage drop. The goal is we have to raise the base of that PMP so that it is above that 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts less than whatever voltage is sitting at its emitter. We want to go above that. So we don't want to lose much voltage across these diodes when we're pushing these buttons. Otherwise, we won't be able to unlatch the circuits. All we have left to do is figure out the wiring. We can go back to our diagram. And what we needed was we needed one latch wire from A, relay circuit A. Then we needed another wire off of the A line to unlatch relay circuit B and then unlatch relay circuit C. And we needed that same story playing out with all these buttons. So let's do them one at a time so that we don't get immediately confused. Is that the first thing we need is the ability to push this button and latch on relay circuit A. How can we do that? We can come off of this point in the circuit. This is just would be symbolizing a row in the breadboard and run a line down to our latch transistor on relay circuit A. That's the first line we'd need. Then we want to unlatch relay circuit B and C with the press of that button as well. This will latch on relay circuit A, but we need to unlatch relay circuits B and C. So in order to do that, we can come off of this same point and run a line 
to the first PMP on relay circuit B. You could go to the second, but the first is fine. And then we need another line going over to the top PMP for relay circuit C. And think about what happens when we push this button. We push this button, positive voltage and current is sent down the line, latches on relay circuit A. While at the same time, positive voltage, cross the shock key, raising the base of this PMP beyond the threshold that it can stand, shutting it off. It raises it above that 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts below the threshold it needs to stay switched on. The same thing happens here. The press of one button latches relay circuit A and unlatches B and C all at the same time. The next stage would be to play out a similar wiring on this point in the circuit for B. We want one press of B to latch on relay circuit B while at the same time unlatching relay circuit A and C. Draw a line. This is our latch line. We push B, it travels over to that upper NPN for relay circuit B. That will latch it on. But at the same time, we need a line from B to unlatch A, that line, as well as a line from B to unlatch C. That line. One push of the button, travels down, latches relay circuit B. While at the same time raising the base of this PNP on relay circuit A beyond its threshold so it cuts off. Then it raises the base of this PNP beyond the threshold so it cuts off. Effectively unlatching either of these. If, and then we need one more set of lines. Coming off of this point at C, we want a line to latch on relay circuit C. So we need a wire from here in this point in the circuit to this point in the circuit. Like that. Here's a line all the way to this NPN transistor. While at the same time, we want this one press of this button to latch on C and unlatch A and B. Well, we have two empty slots left. So all we have to do is run a line from button C to the, this bottom PMP for relay circuit A. And then we need to run a line from button C to this bottom PMP for relay circuit B. And that's it. That's all we need in order to build this latching relay circuit. I hope viewers can now see why I hadn't drawn these lines when we started out. <laughs> if you don't witness it being done, it can be a little confusing. And we're going to actually assemble it and follow this schematic as we go in the next part of this series in part three. We'll build the circuit. That's the thought process that's involved in each stage. This is the end of part two of the series. You've seen from the very beginning just sketching it out of start with a block diagram with the major your control components to your active components thought of as just a black box. Don't know how they're going to work but we know what we want those control lines to do. And then we moved from there to considering the basic latching relay circuit set up again. We reviewed that. Then we looked through the low side, controlling the low side switching of the latching relay circuits with NPN transistors and talked about the master reset line and how that works. And now we have just finished the high side of how to get one press of a button to latch on a circuit while at the same time unlatching two others. As I've mentioned previously, this may not be the absolute perfect or best way to achieve this functionality, but it is one way to achieve it that tends to work reliably over and over again. And it's not that horrible of a circuit, actually. It's an interesting one in that if you've been following along, you've been able to hopefully pick up the idea of 
using NPNs for low side switching, using PMPs for high side switching, as well as a review of basic latching relay circuitry, and how to get multiple functionality out of a single momentary button. I hope this part in the series has been helpful. At this stage, we're ready to move on to part three and begin building the circuit.